Hey, Joe. Joe, could you hear me? I'm here. Loud and clear. How's your family? How's your parents doing? I hope they're doing okay. Okay. So uh, what is going on now? You're saying I'm saying stuff about your family and you're calling me a sand nigger. What's that? Whenever we got local merch, we'd usually send it to Palm Springs or Arizona, L.A. I had a couple of sand niggers out there. You know, Arabs. We're going to have a fucking meeting here. I saw a dog. And you weren't spelling right. Were you Were you in your right straight state of mind? So you're calling this Ron Harris a, a racist and you're calling me a sand nigger. Who's a racist? That's right. Don't say nothing. Keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. That's exactly what I want you to do. You're a coward. You're a sissy. You're a coward. You knock on my door and run. What a coward. You are a coward. You are a racist. Are you jealous because I have more than you? Are you jealous? What are you jealous of, Joe? What are you jealous of? Don't say nothing. That's right. You can't say nothing. You can't defend yourself for what you did. You're going to lose all your sponsors. You're going to lose all the companies that, that, do they know that you're calling me a sand nigger for no reason? I, I plead the fifth. <laughs> good, good, good. Do, do they know? Why would you call me that? Why would you call me that? Why, why would you call me that? Why would you call me that? I'm happy. I, I hope I hope you have every sponsor in the world. Why would you call me that? Why would you say I said anything about your wife? Why would you lie? Why would you say I said anything about your wife? Why would you lie, Joe? Why would you lie? See, you can't say nothing. You can't defend yourself. For what you said, there's no excuse. That is truly a low life. You said I said something about your your family. I didn't say shit about your family. You called me a sand nigger and did this order 66. Wow, they call me. What a coward. You're a former policeman. You're a former policeman. You have, no, you, you have nothing to say. Keep your mouth shut. You have nothing to say. You have nothing to say. You're a racist. You're jealous of Ron Harris. Ron Harris is the kindest, nicest person. He never said one thing. I never told you. You told me. To, you put up that thumbnail. You're the racist. You're the racist. Not Ron Harris. You are a racist. You, you set me, called me a sand nigger. What is that? It doesn't make me anything. It doesn't make me less of I'm proud to be Arab American. Look, uh, look, look at my house. Look at my wife. Look at my cars. Look at my life. What? Who are you? That's right, guys. See? He can't say shit. He can't say shit. You guys are going to follow this 5'7", 175-pound loser. This guy is a loser. He was a police officer that's, that's harassing wife and kids. He's making threats to my wife and kids. Making threats to wife and kids. A policeman. A policeman. A former policeman. A racist policeman. That looks 70 years old. That's jealous of Ron Harris. You would not say that to my face. I guarantee it. You would not say nothing to my face. $25. That video is not going anywhere, my friend. You're ashamed. You're ashamed. You cannot say nothing. You cannot say nothing. You can't even spell. You are so intoxicated, and your 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 painkillers you, that you're abusing after your your surgery. You're abusing painkillers. They're fucking up your brain. You can't say nothing. You cannot say nothing. Just sit there and keep your mouth shut. You understand? We're gonna be dealing with you, okay? We're gonna be dealing with you, you. And don't lie. I never said nothing about your wife or anyone in your family. You're a liar. Ron Harris is racist. You're calling me a sand nigger. Ron Harris is racist. You're a coward. You're a coward. You're a failure. 
You get on the show talking about cocaine, sticking shit up your ass, your prostate. You're a sick man talking sick stuff about your personal life. What kind of man are you? You're not a man. You're a coward. You're a five, seven, hundred and seventy pound coward. You're a sissy. You're a sissy. So what are you going to do when you see me at the Arnold? Are you going to run? Are you going to run? Guys, he can't say nothing. He's a racist. He can't say nothing. He's, he's jealous. This is why they've been ganging up on me. Because I'm a successful Arab American. See that? Be somebody. He can't say nothing. He can't say nothing. See? He can't defend himself. So you have nothing to say. Say it! Say it! That's right. I want you to sit there and keep your mouth shut. You understand me? Keep your mouth shut, little man. Or I'll shut it for you. I will shut it for you. Keep your mouth shut. You understand? Are you threatening me? 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 If you're so jealous of Ron Harris, you're gonna pop, man. He told me he ignores you. You keep calling, sending him harassing stupid messages. He's ignoring you. He's a big man. He works for MD. What do you do? What do you do? You call people. You, you're a racist. That's all you are. You made Ron Harris a racist. He never said shit about Arabs or anything. He's never said shit. All you did, you're the one. You can't even defend yourself. Man, I'm going to stay on YouTube, but I'm going to make it to the top, little bitch. And when I see you at the Arnold, hmm, you better run, you coward. Did you, did you used to take people to jail and, and keep their drug money and keep their drugs when you go in a... Of course you did. You're a bum. You're a bum. Someone to say the things you said and to lie will do anything. You will do anything. of having me on your show big rob is on your show this is a last time you'll ever see me on your show <clears throat> so guys this guy can't defend himself he can't even write like others said he's a hack right uh writer or whatever he doesn't know that's why they fired him that's why they fired him okay no one could stand him okay he was doing shit at work that that the guy, uh, I'm not going to get into it, but he's done a lot of bad shit, guys. You're a filthy person, Ron. I mean, uh, uh, Joe, Joe Patero. You're just so jealous, man. You're just so jealous. Why don't you show me you, you, you working out or show me your house or show me... Instead of just talking, talking about sticking shit up your ass. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Eat my entire ass. What? You're, you're a man. You're a man. You're sick. Have some self-respect. There's kids watching, asshole. I don't want to ever hear you say anything like that. Last time, I'm warning you. You better clean up your act. If not, I'm going to see you soon. I'm going to see you at the Arnold. So you have nothing to say about the racist things you said and the lies you said that I said about. I don't even know your family. I wouldn't dare say anything about someone's family, even if I knew them, because I'm a man. I don't do that. I don't do that bullshit. God forgive you for the things you did. God forgive you for the things you did. Anyone could get Jason Genova to order 66. So what? You just turn your phone off. Please keep it coming. Keep the publicity coming. You're a coward. You're a fake person. This is all going to catch up to you, Joe. Hasn't it? Haven't you been fired? Hasn't it caught up to you? 
Are you even making $4,000 a month off this? So guys, you, you come to this show to see this guy keep his mouth shut. You know why? Because he can't defend himself. There's no excuse. You have 100 viewers because of me. Because of me. You should know there's a real good chance you're nuts. The guy they love to hate, but they're, they're just jealous haters, man. People don't like when they see Arabs doing well in this country. Hello, I'm doing fucking awesome, bro. I'm doing fucking, I've had so many businesses sold, made money, startup businesses sold them, made money. I do what I want, how I want, and when I want. That's my business. That's what I do. What do you do? You were, you were pretty messed up on Saturday. The things you were saying, that's pretty fucked up, man to call me what you did. That's pretty fucked up. It doesn't affect me in any way. But affects you, it's gonna catch up to you, your reputation, whatever's left of it. Make it apply, saying I talk about your family. You're a fool. Make it apply that I call the police on you. What kind of lie is this? Hi, James. This is Service Aid Ryan Holtz with the Livonia Police Department in Michigan. Um, if you could give me a call back at this number, I'd appreciate it. I have some questions about uh, a Robert Jordan that you've been speaking with. Like I said, if you could call me back, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Why would you say, why would you lie about that? This is an emergency. Hang up and dial 911. If you know your party's extension, press 1. Otherwise, please select from one of the following options. For the patrol desk, press 2. For the detective bureau, youth crime prevention. Livonia Police Department, Service Aid Reinholds. Hey, how are you, Service Agent? This is uh, Joseph Pietaro. You just left me a voicemail on my home. Yes, sir, I did. Hi, how are you today, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Uh, I just uh, want to let you know I'm retired NYPD. So I know what this guy's trying to bait me into an aggravated harassment charge, which I haven't done so. I know better than he does, and I know he's chronic and he's an EDP also. So I'd be more than happy to answer, and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. I have nothing to hide. Yeah, so. I just want to give you a call. I mean, he said uh, he said you might have been making a statement that he said life was going to change or something today. I could send you every text message that I told him. There is nothing in there that even came close to aggravated harassment. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to build a report or anything like that. I'm just trying to make. You sure know this guy's a fucking knucklehead, bro. Me too. You got. You know he's chronic because he's been calling you guys for numerous things about YouTubers and stuff. Okay. Long story short, I have two parents in the hospital. I was there for 30 hours. I get home, and this guy starts texting me nonsense. And I told him it, he's going to regret doing what he's doing now because it's not the right time for me to even be talking to him. I have nothing to hide. I will be more than happy to forward you anything you wish to see. No, I'm not trying, like I said, I'm not trying to build a case or anything like that. I just wanted to try and talk. Get in contact with you and try and resolve whatever issue there is between you two. Well, if and I could, you know what? He made a threat to me, so if I could file an aggravated harassment charge, just turn about his fair play as far as I'm concerned. I heard him. He called well, me. We, we he, can't take reports over the phone, unfortunately. Well, he called, um, I'm just letting you know, he called me, and my wife was sitting right here on speakerphone, and he made a threat to assault. Now, I know not to do that, especially over electronic communications. And apparently he, uh, is, he, he he thinks he's too smart for himself, and he did exactly what he was begging me to do. So if he wants to make a report, I, I want I, I would make a counter report. Okay, I got you, bro. Okay. All I would recommend doing is just deleting, blocking the guy's number. It sounds like you guys don't see eye to eye, so I mean, just get rid of the guy's number. You live in New York, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, but you know yeah, what? I mean, just, 
I, I'm getting he's 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 baiting me and trying to and calling me out and all of this stuff and he's not getting a rise out of me because I know better. I'm 51 years of age. I, I worked in the detective squad for many years. I know exactly what he's trying to do, and I'm not falling for it. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to go. I, I understand, but I just want to. I just want to give you a little, uh, a little background on what he's what, what he's attempting to do, and he thinks that he could use you guys as pawns, and it's not fair to you guys. You're wasting time with this idiot, and this guy is this. Like I said, you know he's chronic. I don't need to tell you that. We we had them in my squad too, bro. Same people that would call up for the same things. We used to tell them to put uh, the aluminum foil in the inside of their baseball cap rim. That was our little joke with these with these people, and uh, you know, that's what this guy needs. That type of advice. I, I hear you, man. Like I said, I'm just trying to try and get the issue resolved between the two. See if I mean we can just discontinue contact between the two. Yeah. Well, I'm trying. He keeps he keeps. He keeps calling me and texting me. You can, if I send you the screenshot, you can see there's no replies. Yeah, just, go ahead, just go ahead and block his number, man. I mean, it's not hard. It takes, it takes like 10 Oh, hours. no, I know how to do that. I just, you know, I'm just, at this point, he's the antagonist right now. I get I'm not saying, I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying, let's just try and stop contact. Yeah. Two of you before I mean, no, no, I understand. Listen, you, it, it, I, exactly. I, I'm, I'd like to think that. He's 47, but it seems like he hasn't uh, reached that age as far as, uh, you know, being uh, acting appropriately as that. And then he's he's texting me after you called me, and he says, answer, they need to talk to you. You're in trouble. So he's just, you know, he's just, he's using the police as a weapon in a stupid argument over a text message, which is, it's, it's an embarrassment. That he's even doing that. It's just, it's just not fair to you guys. Yeah, and I understand, man. Like I said, just, just, just get rid of his phone number. I'm gonna talk to him, tell him to do the same thing. But let's just add no, no more contact between the two of you guys. All right? Yeah, but he's baiting me. So if you can ask him to stop yeah, baiting me, and then I'm not gonna I'm fall for saying, it. Let's, let's just Why just file contact, a okay? Can't do it over the phone. All right, man. I, you know, it's, it is what it is. I appreciate it if you do that for me, all right? You got it, bro. Have a we good are evening. Thanks. All right, man. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Let's see what time I have. I have a meeting a little bit. Henry, you know you're a fucking mumbling, stuttering little fuck. You know that? So he's not going to say nothing, guys. Case closed. He knows he's wrong. Thank you. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is called giving someone rope. It's an interrogation technique that many people think that they could talk loud in the city can get away with. There are many ways to get people to hang themselves. That was an example of one of them. Well, the real reason that you've been sent over here is because they wanted you to be evaluated. Yeah. To determine whether or not you're mentally ill. This is the real reason. Why do you think they might think that? Big Rob, I'm here. Where's Big... Oh, there you are, Big Rob. I'm here, buddy. I'm losing my mind, I'm losing my mind. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm crazy. Oh I need a psychiatrist. Oh man. Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely.
How you doing? My name is John Sikoris, and this is Sharice Sikoris, and we're the owners of Titan Medical Center. Um, I'll do three sets of this one. What I'll do is I'll put on a 10, then 20, and then 30. Um, and I'll do my reps on this. I'll blast this out, some military cuts, and then I'll come over here, do some more rear belt, and then I'm done. Um, I'll just finish up with the air force. So, we're going to get started on this. I'll show you how I do this. A 10, lightest weight. And it would not be the fucking family without the maidens in tow. Right here at our own booth, LA Fit Expo. Who the fuck let us have a booth? All right, well, you know them, but I'm gonna let them say their names anyway. Kim Haynes, fit ass. Ink Jesse. Dr. Tony Huge. You saw him in Muscle Sport Magazine with Coach Trevor. What has been going on? You're like a fucking world, you're like the Anthony Bourdain of the fucking fitness industry, bro. Where have you been recently? Well, every day's a different experiment. I've been in the US lately, so down one hour south, we got a laboratory. So I've been doing all kinds of experiments, injecting myself with things, checking my blood work, putting topical things on and checking my blood work, seeing what we can transport through the skin versus through injection. So lots of cool experiments. I got to update you and maybe write an article for your magazine. I'm also wearing my credential, my press pass for Super Bowl 53, which happened uh, recently in Atlanta, where we were down there covering, but not covering, let me explain. That, okay. I weighed the options and I said, good business move. This would be stupid to turn this one down. If I got turned down, I wouldn't have given it any thought. Dumb move if I turn it down because I can go down there and I'm not going to bullshit you. If an advertiser is contemplating if he wants to come on board with us and I throw out to him, oh, yeah, we were just down in Atlanta. We covered the Super Bowl. It's a feather in our cap. It doesn't matter what my stance is on the league. It's the fact that that league, for the biggest sporting event, arguably, because I know people say the World Cup in soccer, but arguably, arguably, oh, arguably, the biggest sporting event in the world, at least for one day, is the Super Bowl. And our media, this is, says Muscle Sport LLC, with my picture and name on it, granted press passes for the biggest sporting event in the world. We cover sports. I'm not a fucking retard. I made my ass down there. Went yeah. to the fucking media center every day. I went to the fan experienced area. I interviewed fans. I interviewed athletes. I interviewed other media personnel. I got what I needed to get out of it. Um, and then I got to the airport Sunday morning, and I actually landed before the game even started. And I did not watch a snap. I didn't listen to it on the radio in the car. I only found out about the final score about... I don't know what time it was, like 11.30, 12 o'clock on Sunday night. No interest in it whatsoever. I didn't care who won the game. I didn't care about anything. Yes, the nose knows that even if you are boycotting today's NFL, to get a credential with the Super Bowl is pretty fucking cool. All right, guys, what are you doing? Check it out. <laughs> Dave M Marrero. Dave Marrero. Guys, I'm the guinea bro. I can't read shit. I can't see shit. I wrote this. Can you get ripped using light weights? Well, when you want to get ripped, you got to go into the gym and lift light weights. There, you can curl a pencil. 
Hey, boy, how fucking stupid is that? That's an old wives' tale. Listen to me. You don't change your workout to get ripped. You change what you fucking put in your goddamn pie hole. Stop putting shit in your pie hole and you get fucking ripped. You got beef, okay? Fucking get out of here. So Dave Morero, I hope that answers your question. The answer is no. So then, well, I think I answered that one, all right? That's, a, that's an easy one. Yeah, next question. The answer is no. Hey, how you doing? This is West Coast Johnny Fit at the LA Fit Expo 2018, and you're watching Muscle Sport TV. Jerry Ward, GIFD Labs, right here at the LA Fit Expo. Come on, show the abs, Jerry! <laughs> He's a monster! Oh, my head is broken! Oh, oh. the Rob Matters! It's garbage content now. Shame on you, MD. You should be ashamed of yourself. So right now, here's my go-to. Muscle sport. Tells it like it is. That's a real bodybuilding magazine like MD used to be. What's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power, and you are watching Muscle Sport TV. Let's see what else this says, huh, man? Hey, fucking Joe, have you ever, have you ever been to New Rock? Yes, I, I have. I fucking Paisan. Hey, fucking you, huh? Yeah, I'm from fucking New York. That's where I'm from. That's what we do in fucking New York. Eh? Eating pizza and pussy. <laughs> Shaved pussy used to be a fetish. Yep. And it was like weird looking. Like almost felt like you were jerking off to something that was on the rain. It's like you didn't write doing it. Yeah, now now hairy pussy is a fetish. Now yeah. <laughs> it just slides right in when there's no air blocking it like a doorman. Like wearing a purple cape and cap blocking my ass. Yeah, a good woman will shave yeah, around her asshole president. for you. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Louis Marco, a.k.a. The LUI, and this is Muscle Sport TV. Salute you wherever you are. Stay proper. I'm out here talking loud in the city. March 1st is almost coming, he's gonna be on his own That day's a mess on subbing, while Rob's in Ohio Gotta get down to it, this troop is cutting him down Should have been done long ago What if you knew this and left him on your sub list? How can you watch when you know? This is going to be a great Arnold Classic weekend coming up in Columbus. And we will see Sean there next. Sean Ray, the legend. <laughs> Finally fucking get to meet the man himself. I call him Nucky Thompson. His real name is Wayne. His nickname is Knucklehead. Fucking what? machine, baby. Fucking machine. I am Knucklehead the machine. This guy is a fucking main big time MSM family member. Supporter of all of our fucking stupid shit. And we've been dying to fucking meet, but now it has occurred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? It's stupid, to, it's stupid to you, but it's fucking cool. It's fucking fun to us. Because a lot of people don't like when people are blunt and real and not fucking fake and they get offended. So you never get offended. Don't watch. But it's the best place on Instagram you could ever get on. It, it's the this shit. This is Robert Frank, 615. And you're watching Muscle Sport TV, the most jacked and tanned show on the fucking internet. 
Dale Chuck E. Cheese fucking chance. I fi finally get to meet him in person. Hey, Dale, what's up, buddy? It's going good, man. How you doing? I'm doing really well, and it's it's fun to meet you because you, you are definitely one of those guys that has a great sense of humor. So, I They challenged me to come down to Delray, and I went down there, and everybody, my family, my friends all thought I was stupid. I didn't know these guys. Why are you driving 10 hours to go see them? I went and saw them, and the rest is history. Third place trophies and all. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this is Kat Sakor, IFBB Pro and Super League Pro, and you're watching Muscle Sport TV. The man needs no introduction. Longtime MSM family member John fucking Stoner, 2017 Arnold. Show him the back of the jacket, John. Transformation champion. This guy's fucking story is worth its weight in gold. How much weight did you lose to win that title in 2017, John? To win the 2017 Arnold Transformation Challenge, I had to lose 150 pounds in six months. That year, uh, overall, I lost 203 pounds in 12 months. I am the luckiest man in the expo. I get to come to the Muscle Pinups booth and interview all of the Muscle Pinups. Denise Messino, of course, here with our crew. Now, well, here is the queen of everything female bodybuilding. Denise, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm surrounded by some of the most badass chicks on the planet. Yes, you are. Life is good. How's muscle pinups going? Everything going good? Great. Uh, great. Um, How's Misfit going? I'm Talked a lot about Misfit, Misfit last Misfit year. for life. Um, I'm good. I'm great. We're here. You know, we have a booth every single year. We just want to see our fans, connect to them, let them see beautiful female bodybuilders and muscle, and connect to that, take pictures and have a great time, and get inspired. Clayton Sullivan and Aaron Myers will be the first match. Are you ready? Super Bowl 53 right here with DDP himself, Diamond Dallas Page. 
Diamond, I've had you on MSM Radio with Greg Valentino and myself, but I can't, I can't pass up an opportunity to see you again. And you look phenomenal, bro. How you feeling? Oh, just like the shirt says. <laughs> I just, I dropped a new book called Positively Unstoppable, and uh, the art of owning it. And uh, you know, my word for the last, I don't know, 12 years has been unstoppable, and it's something I go by. You know. Yep. I'm Ink Jesse, and you're watching MSTV. Day two right here at the Arnold Expo in Columbus, Ohio, here with Nick Miller. Yeah, MSM columnist Nick Miller, I'm glad to say. Nick strength and power, but also he has a great gig this weekend. Him and Aaron Singerman from Redcon 1, they're doing the play-by-play -play of the Arnold. Nick, congratulations, first of all. How did that come about with you and Aaron? So actually, Generation Iron was supposed to do the live stream, and when it came time to pay, they said, fuck it. And they just completely ghosted the promoters and didn't pay them. So they gave it to Aaron, and Aaron called me up, and he said, hey, man, you want to do the commentary? Hell yeah, I want to do the commentary. So that's how I got it. And I'm very proud you did that wall, and I saw the magazine in your column there, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And fuck MD, I say. <laughs> Uh, you, 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 I could say it. You stay down the middle, bro. You, you, I'm the bad guy. You got to be the good guy in this industry. Tony Gonzalez and Ray Lewis, of course. The last time the Super Bowl was in Atlanta, Ray Lewis was involved in a fucking homicide. This is Kim Haynes Fit Ass, and you're watching Muscle Sport Media. Hi, I'm the Crazy Hawk, Blackstone Athlete's first ever Spartan race athlete. I'm Thea Renee. And you are watching Muscle Sport Magazine TV. They're both sexy and nice. <laughs> this little kid is fascinated by the maidens jiggling their beautiful breasts and <laughs> I, I think i'm glad his mom didn't see him doing it in your prostate Oh my god, it's so <laughs> <laughs> Well, and they're in. Oh, okay. <laughs> Double feature. Uh, I got the double feature on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad being a major league pitcher, what kind of influence did that have? I honestly think the game can go either way. Um, my, my biggest thing is I think there's going to be uh, ups and downs with both teams. I think both teams are going to, it's going to be a, a haymaker here, a haymaker there, and I think they're going to battle. I, I always say the guy, I think the team that has the ball last is going to win. I mean, you can watch the way Tom played against us, and, they, and this, whole, this whole season, his whole career is, if he gets that last drive, he's going, to, he's going to get in the end zone somehow, some way. And then if you watch how Jared played, especially this last week against the Saints, is when, it, when the situation got bigger, when the moment got bigger, he made the throw. And so I think it's going to come down to that. Uh, I had to pick maybe maybe the Patriots because of experience, but it's, it's definitely just a, it's a here or there whoever gets the ball last. Hey guys, it's Cheyenne Hacker, aka Guns and Weights on Instagram, and you're watching Muscle Sport TV. Robert Baxter, Spencer Lightning Fire, right here. These guys got a rivalry better than the Yankees and the Red Sox. 17 years, you guys have been fighting on the arm wrestling table. Yeah. Well. Yeah, 17 years, and this guy kicks my butt every time. Like, uh, we, once we went 50 times in the hook because I thought I could wear him out, and I, unfortunately I lost 50 times. But at least you had the balls to go up there because yeah. he's pretty good. Yeah, four-time world champion, pretty good. Yeah. So how is this rivalry to you? It's good. It's a fun time. Uh, Spencer's a character. He's, uh, he's, he never gives up. And he's been training consistently for 17 years, and he's, he's got all the confidence in the world. And he's doing really well. 
he's beaten some top names around the world. Just not yours. Well, not mine yet. <laughs> not mine yet. But he's doing very well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm Alex. I'm Brianna. This is my first season. And I just got done with my second season. Right here at the Salt Lake City Fit Con and the arm wrestling section, Battle of the Arms with the man running the show, Peter Mills and Spencer Lightning Fire. I'm here and wait. You guys are challenging one another for a charity match. That's the talk around town. Yeah, well, what happened was uh, I had some matches. Pete saw me, and he's like, I think I could take you. And I thought, no way could he take me. I mean, honestly, not a chance. But he got on the table, and I was like, oh, my gosh, he's got a lot of power. Like, check out that forearm. Show him that forearm. That's it. <laughs> so that's why Sp our Spencer here, who doesn't even eat meat. Like, I don't even eat meat. Meat. How is he going to beat me if you don't eat meat? Right? What do you eat, like, cupcakes and shit? Like, I mean, broccoli? I'm here with the She-Hulk. Well, it's really IFBB Pro Isabel Terrell, but she's the She-Hulk. How you doing? I'm feeling pretty green today. Look, she had a little clip up the other day. I follow you, by the way. Where you were wearing, like, an American flag bikini, yeah, and the, P the POV angle of it, I, I must admit, I, I, I was very excited. I enjoyed myself. Thank you. Fit Rockstar on Instagram. Follow her, guys. She's fucking mint. <laughs> and we have right here Mariana Trafamova. Did I say that right? Exactly, right? It sounds excellent. <laughs> uh, it sounded excellent and it looks better than excellent <laughs> getting in the delorean i wish i can go back to 1955 yeah, yeah. dodgers won the world series yeah, i would have enjoyed not, that that's not the only thing you would like from 1955. <laughs> i probably yeah. would move down south too yeah. <laughs> right after the series right after game yeah. seven i jump i'll yeah. go to idle wild airport <laughs> <laughs> but we're here with the man himself junior he made this for me i love this fucking guy 444 active on Instagram, and obviously, this is his own work. Right, I have to wear it, man. I have to. Of course, right. you have to. Yeah. How did you start making these pendants? You know, I figured I saw some online, and I figured, man, I can do better than that. You know, better quality, uh, handmade out of titanium. You can't beat that. They they last forever. This is Deadpool coming to you from LA Fit Expo. You're watching <laughs> Russell Sport TV. Bedroom Bully Bonanza. Hey, Dan, I, I, I didn't realize it until later on when I looked at your, your YouTube page when Johnny Bravo pointed me to the clip that we're going to be showing in a moment. You were also at the LA Fit Expo. We could have hung out together, pal. I had my own booth, Muscle Sport Media. You, you couldn't have fucking missed it. It was a full-fledged booth. And uh, uh, t Tony fucking Dr. Tony Huge... He came and hung out there. I even did an interview with him. Uh, you were palsing around with him all weekend. It would have been great. I would have had both of you there. No hard feelings. Let's just have a few fucking laughs. And uh, I don't know. Maybe you feel differently than I. Let, let's cut to the videotape, shall we? Uh, like the people that really did, like, fuck with me, though, when I was in there. Like, those people who truly, like, the fitness industry people, like, truly exposed them as, like, pieces of themselves as, like, pieces of dog shit. Like, when you're, when you're going after somebody, like, in that situation, like, dying in a hospital bed, and you're, like, starting rumors about them, and, like, saying, like, that they're scamming people, and that they're, like, some kind of, like, piece of shit, like, there was some faggot going on the internet, like, making videos saying, like, to shoot myself in my hospital bed, it was Muscle Sport TV who did that. For the record, I was one of the only ones out there who actually said, I believe that this idiot... Oh did fuck his leg up and did have an infection and did need <laughs> surgery. I didn't think you were faking it. 
I thought you were an asshole for fucking getting it and then a bigger asshole for fucking not taking responsibility for yourself oh. and having to get a crowdfunding thing going. <laughs> but uh, I never said that. I never started a rumor saying that you faked it. I gave you credit for doing it. And yeah, I'll play the thing that I said that came up on one of my lives oh. uh, when uh, referring to what he said about uh, <laughs> uh, the suicide uh, uh, reference there. If all right, long story short, we had a fucking blast on uh, uh, on our Wednesday Instagram Live, uh, LegalSteroids.com presents Gearing Up this past week, and we were talking about the bodybuilder in Thailand. His name is Dan Marquis, a 26-year-old Californian who a couple of years ago moved to Thailand. Not now, that. if you could say one thing to the bodybuilder in Thailand this very moment, what would it be? Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking, here's my fucking nine millimeter bodybuilding in Thailand. Put it in your mouth. Face the roof, tap. Don't go this way because you might just miss your spinal cord and still be alive. We want you dead in one shot. <laughs> roof of the mouth so it goes through the top of the fucking head, through the brain. <laughs> If the bodybuilder in Thailand called me a pussy, I would feel really bad. I just you know, <laughs> fucking hop along Kezad each. We're gonna call him. <laughs> after, after, he ain't even gonna make it out of Colombia. That fucking dick. Why would you go to Colombia? <laughs> Why would you go to Colombia? Thursday. Do not go to third world countries. Yes, and if you do and you need an operation, don't go to another one. That might probably be even worse. What is he going to become part of the caravan, that asshole? <laughs> He's going to hop all the way from Colombia to fucking Tijuana. And then fucking Crazy Hawk will see him through the fence and spit on his fucking stump. <laughs> right, Jay? How fucking stupid is this fucking jerk off? He's got to be. Is he a guinea? Because he's probably a dopey guinea. I mean, some, I don't know. He just says, my name is Dan. That's I'm, I'm I'm looking at his site right now. It's 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 captivating. It's captivating this site. Uh, but I want to find uh, Chris Bra. Chris, you got to make a video about the Thailand bodybuilder. <laughs> He's Dan the bodybuilder in Thailand on YouTube. <laughs> Listen to this. He had a surgery that ended up being a failure in Colombia. I am, I, I, I'm beside myself. I am shocked to shit. Dan needs help to save his leg. 12,766 raised of a $30,000 goal. Eat asshole like Lenny and you become immune to bacteria. Yes, yeah, especially Dennis Rodman's asshole in the latest video. This... GoFundMe should be for like fucking some lady that has fucking cancer and like 18 kids. Like the little old lady that lived in the shoe. If she had like cunt cancer or something, she deserves a GoFundMe page. <laughs> Joe Piataro. What a little hater bitch. Like what fucking piece of shit. Like the world's better off without him. Like, he's better off dead. So it's okay that you could say the world's better off without me than I'm better off dead. But when I say it, and obviously being a ball-breaking douchebag that I can fucking be, and my whole programming is ball-breaking douchebag fucking humor, uh, that was such a terrible sin. Right there, young man? So, like, it's like... People like that, man, they expose themselves through my, through my, um, through my, like, leg thing, like, they really see, like, and it was like, there's a lot of private stuff, like, behind the scenes that happened to this, yeah. Dan, the bodybuilder in Thailand here. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back here talking about this, yeah. And, um, it's like, it's fucked up, dude. It's fucked up. And, uh, you know what? It fucking changed me. And, 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 uh, so eventually I got the fucking surgeries. And, uh, I don't even want to talk about it anymore, okay, guys?
guys. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done talking about it for today. All right? It fucking changed me, okay? Keyword today. Because that was just a snippet from a video that was about 28 fucking minutes long of pretty much the same shit you saw there in the last uh, minute and a half, if you will. So you be the judge. Make up your own mind. I don't know. We'll see what happens. All I know is that I got the Renee on the cover of the new issue, baby. Where did your pussy head go? Where is the bush I used to know? How could you lose that nappy hoe? Oh, Caroline, grow. Who took that month away? I remember how you used to say You never shave But that's not true Oh Caroline, you Break my heart I want to go and cry It's so sad to watch A moist twat dry Caroline, why? And welcome back to MSTV. I am your host, Joe Pietaro. We are being joined right now via Skype by Chris Gronkowski from iShaker. Chris, welcome to the program. What's up? Thanks for having me. Hey, listen, I got to tell you something, man. That Shark Tank episode was fantastic. You and your brothers, the, the the exuberance that you guys show, the fun that you show, the love for each other. And- uh, still to this day, I mean, it's 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 that pride, it's that competitiveness that still gets me up every morning and gets me lifting because yeah. I don't want to be that that one guy in the family that isn't jacked. You know, that's not. <laughs> Bedroom bully bonanza. Bedroom bully bonanza. MSTV. Muscle Sports Mag. What's up, freaks? Little squirt. sheets all full of cum do you lust me do you squirt a girl Uh Uh I have banged you out for sure Entering your tight back door Do you lust me? Do you squirt a girl? 